Ah, I think it's all working. Hello. Um, just popping on to do a quick live stream today. Just checking we're running and everything is going all right. Hello, Marilyn. Nice to see you. Um, please do, um, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, I would really appreciate it if you pop a little uh, note in the comment to let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me okay. Looks to me like everything is working all right, so I'm going to just kind of assume that it is and proceed <laughs> accordingly. So, a few messages coming through now. Hello, Roberta. Hello, Chris. First time here. Brilliant. Everyone can see in here. Brilliant news. Let's get going. So today, I've mostly been eating. No, today I am um, doing a, a bit more on this setup. The light has gone now, so I've been working on it this afternoon while I had daylight. The light has gone now, so I have to proceed from the photo reference because the light from my, this is a Niwa 660 LED with a softbox on it. It, it makes the setup look entirely different than it does in daylight, okay? So you can see I've got a little bit further with it. The squash is in, the apples are in. Um, but the problem I have with it now is that having done... Oh, this is actually the third session, thinking about it, because I did two sessions on the cloth before. Because when I did the, the last session on the cloth, the next day, as often happens with oil paint when you work in layers, it's sunk in really badly. Now what happens when paint sunk, sinks in is that if you have two layers of paint, the oil from the top layer kind of gets sucked through into the layer below and you end up with a slightly underbound paint film on the top layer. And um, the effect from looking at it is that the chroma drops, so the colors are less intense and the value um, tends to compress. And the way to fix it is to oil out. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to flick over to hopefully this is all going to work let me knock this big light off so we get a better exposure on the camera so you can hopefully see the painting on a small version of the subject now so the painting is here my palette is here so i've got a camera like up there pointing down onto my palette so the camera is actually looks vertical on the screen i know but it's not Just, um, just a couple of things I've got to do before I get started. Make sure that I can see all the comments as they come in. I just need to bring that up so I can see it. Okay, hopefully I should now be able to see all your comments as well. Usually I get this set up. So I have this clever little kind of, this little app that pulls, hello Janice, that pulls um, comments from Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Um, and I forgot to start it, but now I can see everything. So we're all good. So um, you can see on the palette today, this is the colours that I found out for mixing the squash. Do you want me to go through them? Should I tell you what I've been up to? Um, this is lead white, which I'm actually going to change now because I've got loads of paint in it. Um, that is bright yellow lake, which is an aralide yellow, very transparent green yellow, yellow ochre. These are two different types of green gold. This, the bottom one, this one is Windsor and Newton, and that one is Michael Harding. So I was just trying out to see which I preferred. And there's not much, they're the same pigment. There's not much to choose between them really, but I like the, the feel of the Michael Harding one more. Ultramarine blue, raw umber and black. This is a thallow green, Windsor and Newton, Windsor green, yellow shade, and this is burnt umber. So here, 
you can see the light and the shadow colours that I mixed for the squash. Yeah, oiling out, it's got to be done sometimes. Hello, Susan, good to see you. And Johnny Bean is here. Hello, Michelle. Yes, I'm going to tell you what I've been up to. Um, so basically, I've got a light colour, a middle a kind of half tone colour and a shadow colour for the squash. So that's how I got that. So I'm just at the blocking in stage, trying to get the forms to work at the moment and make sure that the colours are working all right overall. Um, I should also point out that the cloth is actually closer in colour to how it looks in real life. <laughs> and I haven't done a great job of balancing the colour on the photo. It's a little bit more kind of blue than it really is. Honest, Gov. Um, and then these colours here, you can see I've got quite a few reds and oranges out here. And these because I've been really struggling to hit a high enough chroma on the light parts of the apples. So um, I'm probably going to, well, I definitely will go back into all of this at some point, probably next stage. But I've got permanent orange. I mean, I've literally thrown the kitchen sink at this to try and get the highest chroma at about a middle value. Permanent orange. That's Cagello light. I had some naphthol red, but I've run out. I've got two different pyro reds and I've got quinacridone rose. So I've got like the gamut of reds. And the reason that the burnt umber is here is because it, uh, burnt umber is an orange red. So it's useful for mixing shadow colors if you mix it with quinacridone rose for very high chroma reds, because these apples are very high chroma. So that's what I've done here at the moment. But what I'm going to do now, oh, actually, I'm going to tell you something else that I've been fiddling with today, is that I've been pushing the darks, the dark values on the shadows a little bit lower than they actually look to me in real life. So today, I mean, this whole painting is being worked on in a combination of photo reference and, which you're seeing now, and from life. And usually I try and get the shadow values about as I see them and then paint the rest of the thing, working from life. This time I've pushed the value of the shadows down a little bit. And the reason for that is so I can get a clearer feeling of form. Because um, if you think about the range of value in the, in the world, even an interior still life setup. So the range of value you can get from light to dark is like that. Okay, and what we can actually hit is like that. Um, and it's shifted to one side, okay, so it's, it's harder to hit the lights, as light as they should be, than it is to hit the darks. You can get quite close to the darks, but you can't hit the lights. So I've made my shadows slightly lower in value than I'm seeing them in order to keep the separation of light and shadow, and I think it's working all right so far. So value is something that I think you can... You know, you, you can play with it quite a bit. You have quite a lot of freedom. If you get your chromas right and all of that kind of stuff, you have a fair amount of freedom with what you do with those. So I've been really struggling to get the chrome high enough on the light side of the apples, and I've compromised by dropping the value a little bit, and I'm just going to live with it, I think. What can you do? So that's what I've been up to today. And now the light's gone. So I'm under studio lights with the photo reference. So I've got to be really careful I don't just end up copying the photo. But I want to work some more on, on the cloth and some on the background. But the first thing I need to do before I do that is to oil it out. So all of this is sunk in. So I'm going to get a little bit of... This is a linseed oil. Hello, Darren. Nice to see you. And this is how I do it. I'm, you know... Uh, um, doubtless it's really unprofessional method and you're supposed to use like, I don't know, some special sponge. But I use my thumb, get a bit of oil on it, and then you'll see this change, you know, just a little bit of oil and suddenly it goes a little bit darker. And the chroma comes back, it brings it to life basically, and it becomes very difficult to, to judge your... Um, all of your your values and your chromas against each other when you're painting and you've got bad sinking in. So I've just rubbed some oil. I'm just going to rub it over the shadow areas just to bring those back to life so I can see what I'm dealing with a bit better. 
Like this area over here is quite badly sunk in as well, so we've rubbed a bit over here. And also, because I'm going to work some more on the cloth next, I want to bring in a little bit more detail and resolve it a little bit in some places. Now that I've got, up here I've got the main colours in and I've got my lowest value, which is here, now that I've got that in, it's kind of, it's easier for me to see how the cloth is working. So, I, don't, I think I put on the title that this is the second session and it just totally isn't, it's the third session. But I don't really care how long this painting takes. I'm not going to sell it or anything. I don't think. So, uh, you know, I'm doing this one just for the love. And the background also, this is all sunk in, so I'm going to oil that out as well because I want to do a little bit on the background. I want to bring up the value. I've got to be really careful not to hit my squash though. So some people I have heard oil out with a mixture of solvent and oil. I mean, maybe that works all right, but my concern with that is I don't want solvent on the on, in, in, the, in between any layers of paint, I only want oil, you know, once I've done like the first bit of the painting. I don't want any solvent in my paint. I did actually hit my squash with my thumb there. I'm going to get like a David Leffel glow on the shadow. It's a bit sunk in there. Now this bit down here, I don't know if you can see that. This bit is really sunk in, and that is, was actually my darkest value before, so I'm going to rub a bit of oil over that just to bring it back so I can see the value balance better. Because it's very hard, even if the values are just a little bit out, careful of the apples, um, it can be very, very hard to see the relationships properly. You see how it has a bit more depth and life now. It's almost like you're looking through it through an extremely thin piece of tissue paper and until you wide it out and then you can actually see what you've got again. I want to move these brushes a little bit in the way. The size, excuse me, the size of the panel is, um, it's a 16 by 12 funnily enough, almost exactly, it's a little bit different and it's, um, it's a wooden panel that I've then stretched linen over, which I've oil primed. It's my favorite surface to work on. Sinking in, I, uh, the only way I know, is, frankly, to avoid sinking in is to do work a la prima. You don't get sinking in if you do it in one layer, in a single layer. You know, it doesn't happen. I need to clean some palette space. Let's get rid of these reds. Uh, and what, because what causes it is um, if you put a layer on top of another layer, the layer underneath, the, the oil kind of leaches out of the top layer, the oil in the paint, and it gets sucked into the layer below. Um, and then you end up with an underbound paint layer with less oil in it, which makes it, gives it that, I suppose you could say chalky look. You know, the values become closer together. So you mostly the darks, you lose the darks, but the value balance goes. Um, and also the chroma drops as well. And then it becomes very difficult to judge. So now I've oiled that in, I can actually see all of my values now. And you can also tell when you've got sinking in, because if you, if you look, um, like from the side at your the surface of your painting with a light on the other side of you, so you would ordinarily have a bit of glare, you will see that the sunken in areas are matte. They go very matte. The opposite of this kind of glossy satin look that oil paint normally looks like. And that is sinking in. Really, really annoying. Thank you, Tim. That's a nice thing to say. So I'm still feeling anyway that I, I kind of like the colours in the shadows here, but I'm less keen on all of this. I think this is all too yellow. The top's okay. Could maybe go a little bit more magenta than that. 
I'm kind of tempted to. I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to do mix the light colors this time with titanium or or lead white. I think I'll stick with lead white because I might want to do some more on it still. So I'm going to, to begin with, I just want to refine the cloth and I'm going to work mostly on the lights. I've got some titanium there as well if I need it. So the lightest part of the cloth, actually I will put a bit of titanium in for that. Titanium is nice because I'm putting, I'm mixing a bit of titanium into the lead. It makes it a little bit more opaque and also slightly towards a kind of blue. I want like a magenta. Because the hue goes slightly towards magenta. So I'm going to put out some of this. I very rarely have this many colours on my palette at once. It's just because I was struggling with the, trying to get the high chroma reds. If anyone knows of a good red that hits an extremely high chroma, at value five or six, I'm all ears. <laughs> Answers on a postcard, please. Or uh, email me or PM me. You know, I, I desperately, desperately want to hit a high chroma on my apples at value six. And I fudged the value a little bit and I'm not happy with it. So this is, I'm putting a little bit of magenta in and a little bit of black. And I'm actually gonna mix Go down the value scale. Let's have a value a little bit below that. So that's just black and white, and I'm going to put a little bit of um, the magenta in that as well. So the basically, it, I think the magenta hue, it is definitely there. It's not just the photo. It's it's combination of the, the color of the cloth mixing with the color of the light that was falling on it when I took that photo and has been today because some some of today has been quite bright what I find is this thing about cool lights and warm shadows it's not a rule that you can always apply willy-nilly because um, it depends on the light you know when you when you've got north light like I have in this studio, pretty much. And um, I'm going to use a synthetic today for the cloth because I want to work a bit finer, get some oil on it and then wipe it off. I call this working in the brush. It's not just me that calls it that, decorators call it that too. What was I saying about the light? If, you, if it's a sunny day and you've got um, light coming into an indoor space from the outside that light will be will have a slightly blue hue because it's reflected off the sky um i can go a little bit more magenta a little more white if it's an overcast day, like today, I've had a bit of both. I've had a bit of sunshine early on and then like a more overcast later. An overcast day, the light is very neutral, so you don't get that much difference in hue between your light and your shadow. Did I oil that bit out? I can't remember. This is more like it. This is what I want to be getting, this slightly... Magenta kind of pull, mostly in the lights. So then this part over here, which is very yellow, would also be more magenta. So I'm trying to, I'm happy with the values, so I'm trying to keep the values good. And, um, and drop the chroma in the upper values of the cloth and just keep that yellow and chroma in the, in the shadow areas.
to try and get that kind of feeling of the north interior light a little bit more. I think I like the way that's going. Alex says, nice to see you, Alex. Hello. Um, Enjoying the cloth rendering, it reminds me I should get more cloth into my still life, especially whites, as they are very enjoyable to paint. They really are. They're kind of tricky, though, as well, I think. I mean, getting the chroma right and getting that kind of delicate balance between the light and the, and the shadow, it can be kind of tricky. But, um, yeah, they are nice. They are nice to paint. Cloth is lovely to paint. The, I think, for me, probably the best thing about painting cloth is the effect it has on the composition. So like for this one, it was pretty deliberate that, um, you know, I could easily have chopped this painting off there and just and just had everything above it, you know. But I really love the cloth in this. I love painting this cloth. And I've painted and drawn it a few times. It's like a natural, uh, I, I don't know very much about fabrics, but it's like a natural linen. And it has a really nice kind of a feel to it. I'm going to allow a little bit of raw umber to creep in to my magenta grey for when I'm coming down in value. This wants to come down a bit here. So I'm thinking about values and plane changes and where things are facing the light. Let's get some more of this. Uh, this uh, this change feels good. I've, I've been it's been bothering me slightly the cloth, but I'm a lot happier about the direction it's going in now. And when there was only the cloth in, it was difficult to judge. Here's a nice thing about oiling out, right? If I want to get a soft edge here, you know, if I just put some paint on there, I end up with a hard edge between the shadow and the light pit that I just put on. But this is very thin. And this has been oiled out, so it's, I'm painting wet into wet, so I can actually soften that edge, you know, or I could use the brush to do it. Let's say a um, nice soft synthetic, you know. You're effectively painting wet into wet, but you already have some, some paint down there, you know. That's why it's so nice painting into, a, into um, an oil couch. So I, Basically, I never paint these days if I accept into an oil, an oil couch. If I'm on a second layer, sometimes I'll just, I'll just oil out. Um, this has got red in it. I can't use that titanium. I want some higher value. Sometimes I'll just oil out an, just an area. Sometimes I'll oil out like a lot of it, like I did just then, you know. Alex says, quinacridone red's a high chroma. Not sure what value six is though. Yeah, I've got, I've got quinacridone here. I've got quinacridone rose, but it's lovely and high chroma, but it's about a value four, so. Let's say in terms of the value scale, right? Quinacridone rose is about here, and I want to be here, quite a lot lighter. And by the time you've mixed the white in to bring it up, then the chroma has dropped off, dropped off a cliff. So, you know, and I wanted it to be slightly more orange as well for some of the apples. So actually what worked quite well, one of the best mixes that I got with the highest chroma was quinacridone rose brought up to a value six, which is up here with white. Um, and then um, I brought in some some of the permanent orange, which is already about a value six, and that started pulling it back towards orange and added chroma back in. And I got a pretty good chroma that way, but it was still less than I wanted. Sorry, I'm just catching up on old comment. 
So I want a bit more, put a little bit of titanium in with my lead. Because I want this to... I'm a little bit wary of pushing it too far because I want the highlight still to work. I may need to come up a little bit. like we're getting somewhere a little bit more. Bring, so as I go, as I'm going down the value range, I'm going from a slightly more magenta and lower chroma and I'm bringing in raw umber, which is sending it a little bit more towards a yellow orange and it also brings the chroma up a little bit as well. And it seems to be having quite a nice giving it quite a nice uh, balance. Because this bit is like very yellow now, you know, so if I make this bit that's a little bit too dark, more towards the kind of grey magenta, it should work as light. So gradually, bit by bit, I'm setting up this kind of the change, you know, from um, light magenta grey into higher chroma and more you know, like a yellow in the shadows. Let's go down into the shadow. A bit of yellow in it. I don't want the chroma too high though. Black. So I'm actually just um, doing this on the fly because I, I find personally once I've got enough in there, as I have in this painting at the moment, a, a lot of this I can I can kind of um, I can just work with the relationships and I don't need to do like a lot of very careful mixing with muscle in order for it to work. As long as I don't paint anything really badly, which is obviously, you know, a strong possibility. Oh, <laughs> always. But I think it's going pretty nice. Well, I'm just going to try over here in this low area, low value area, bringing in a little bit of the grey to suggest some a bit of light in there and it's going to give it a nice kind of interplay hopefully yeah oh that's lovely so these colors are almost the same value but the one that i'm putting in there i'm just sort of ghosting over a, a, a very low chroma more more magenta ish gray to be careful i don't overdo it and it's got a really nice little play of of color there i like that a lot Subtle, but Rembrandt Vermilion, probably closer to a six, but heading towards orange. Yeah, well, maybe though. Thanks, Alex. I'll give that a try. I'll give that a try. Rembrandt Vermilion, because um, even if it is going towards orange, I can always put it back with one of my pyrrole reds, which are more blue. You know, so it can probably be. Um, Oh, I've just put my light brush in my shadow. I usually paint, like I tend to think in terms of light and shadow, so I usually have a, a light brush and a shadow brush. And I just put my shadow brush in my, my light brush in my shadow color, which is really a nice thing to do. Soften this edge. The edges are just so important. They show the form.
Any suggestions to find the Monster Book of Colors with the chips? Honestly, just Google it. Pantone sell it, but it's like $1,000 or more now. It's really getting outrageous, like the, the money that they're charging for that thing now. It's just ridiculous. It's so frustrating. A um, couple of questions about that. Tim says, do you have any advice... Uh, for trying to start the Munsell system on a budget. Right, yes, I really do. I totally do. So the first thing I would suggest is um, carry on with the painting that you normally do, you know, but try this as well. Hang on, I've just got to put this in here and see how it looks. Um, get this. Ta-da! Um, if you on, you go to eBay and you look for Paul Cantore, C-E-N-T-O-R-E, -E, Munsell Value Scale, it's $10. Everybody knows value is the most important thing. Get this value scale um, and then look up how to mix a, a Munsell Neutral Scale. I've got several videos out there on YouTube with details on how to do it and on Vimeo as well, right? And then mix each one of these values and do it until you actually, you can't try really hard, you know, and do it until you can't see the difference between them. Okay, and then once you've done that, <laughs> hang on just a minute. Get some of these little styrofoam spheres, stick them in natural, like, paint them different values, like you could paint like, you know, nine of them in the different months of values. Stick them in a shadow box and do paintings of them until you're blue in the face. And that's really going to nail value for you. <laughs> and then everything will be easier. And then, um, then start thinking about colour. I'm not, uh, no um, exaggeration. I spent a year doing just that before I moved on to colour with Monsell. So that when I did, when I, when I added hue and chrome, and my, my values were, well, they were, they were pretty good by then, you know. And you can also, if you want to see more of what I did, you can Google Munsell value exercises and you'll find a bunch of posts on my blog about how I did it in excruciating detail. Like it was about 15 years ago. And I used to blog like the whole process of how I did everything. So that will be on there, you know. That's where I would start with value. No. Great place to start. The, the place to start. So I'm going through, I'm trying to take out like all, all of the, the middle values where I've got it, it's too yellow. <laughs> and gradually, bit by bit, the cloth is turning into the color that I want it to be. It'll take a little while before it's all there. So some of it is still looking very yellow and some of it is starting to turn the colour that I want it to be now. That's really, this bit's really light here actually. It's quite high. High value area there. That's a little bit lighter there. So this is sort of like quite a big change that I'm doing on the cloth at the moment. If I can use this gorgeous grey to suggest some light. Ooh, that's nice. And a little bit. I find cloth endlessly fascinating to paint. Oh, that was my shadow brush I just put in the light. Not doing very well today with my brushes.
and it's probably worth mentioning that I'm pretty much like after almost every mark I step back and squint um, just to see if it hit the note that I wanted it to hit. I do a lot of running forwards and backwards. Um, and then, and then after you've done, sorry, I'm, 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 uh, I didn't finish that, what I was saying. And then after you've done the value stuff, after that, get hold of the Munsell student book and the edition that you want, that's only going to cost you $100, right? Don't go straight for the big book. Do, then get this, the Munsell new student color set. This is um, edition six. It's about $100, has a load of chips in it. Um, and I worked with that for about two years before I got the big book. So I was really convinced that, that Munsell was the thing that was going to crack colour for me before I actually went for the big book. And I got the big book, it will be about 10 years ago now, more, more actually. And uh, it was the best decision I've ever made, you know, it's, it literally solved colour for me. The, the, the student book and the, the big book together, working with them for quite a while. And there wasn't really, you know, I, I kind of figured it out on my own. There wasn't really a, people talk about the Munsell system. You know, I'd love to know what it is because the, I don't think there's any one system. Like my friend Richard Murtock, who's an amazing painter, he uses Munsell ex extensively. Um, but he uses it in a really different way than I do. You know, we were having discussions about how we we end up with different results sometimes. And I think it's because our methodology is slightly different. It's a little bit like that blind men in the room with the elephant thing, I think. You know, so we, we're, we're, we're touching different parts of the ele elephant and we, we get a different impression of, of what's there. So I would say broadly, my approach is I'm a very broad painter and I We've worked from life a lot, and I tend to f focus more on the big, the big look. The, you know, the overall kind of balance of light and shadow, and and then work down to the details, and and then kind of get bored and don't don't do too much of that. Um, and I'm quite, actually quite envious of painters who can be really focused and do very detailed work, you know. I kind of feel I would like to be able to do more of that. But this is a bit yellow here as well. I'd like to bring more detail into what I do. I, I feel that sometimes that I'm a little bit slapdash, but I, I, I also, I like the big statement. I like a big, strong statement, you know. And I mostly, that's what I mostly focus on. The balance of the shadow and the light across the whole thing. And I will often paint things, you could say, I mean, you know, unfinished really. And then run out of steam and, and move on to something else. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not keeping up with the chat. I'm actually, I'm having a bit of a bit of a, a ball here with my cloth. I've got to be careful that I don't end up making regular marks though, that's so easy to do. Make a little pattern, a regular pattern because the world is not that way. So I couldn't paint like this lightly and have it work if I'd um, if I hadn't oiled it out first, it just it just wouldn't it wouldn't work. When you're painting into oil, especially when you're painting over something, I find anyway you can get away with like putting the the, the paint on fairly um, fairly thinly, and it will flow nice, and you'll still get a nice finish. There's a bit of reflected light there on this side that I'm not getting. It's going to be too light. Okay. 
And if you put something like I overstated the reflected light there, the value is too high. So I can just wipe it back, take off some of that oil. And bring it back to where it needs to be. It's kind of, it's, it's more fun painting on, uh, working on the painting at this stage, I always think, because you've got, I've got enough in now anyway with this painting that I think, yeah, you know, it's going to be all right. It's not going to be an utter disaster. Um, it's working okay, so I can afford to just take my time and enjoy just kind of making the forms and trying to refine things. Let's have a nice big glob of shadow behind that raw umber, and I'm going to go more yellow to yellow ochre. I'm going to drop the chroma with black, bring the value up a little bit because that's going to be too low. wimped out and brought the value up too much. I just want to bring in a bit more chrome and a slightly lower value down there and see. Because I like this strong, I like this fold. I was worried about it on the last session. I didn't think it was coming off, but I think it's quite a strong part of the, of the composition. And it says, I just ordered natural pigments lead white. Thanks for the suggestion, you're welcome. Brenda says, I've got the big book, but I, I often don't use it. Get that book out. Get it, <laughs> get it out. Mine is always next to my easel. Always, always. I mean, it's useful just for doing like mixing exercises. You know, that's, that really helps. Are you coming in then? Come on then. I'm not coming out, I'm painting. Come on in. Like, no, come in. Come on then. Yes, I know. Come on. I'm busy painting, Kitty, yeah. I know, he wants a pat, I see. Give me a pat. I want a darker value here. Let's get some oil on there, because I don't think I, I oiled that out. I wanna, I'm, now that this is starting to come together a bit more, I kind of feel like I want to look at the background a little bit. So I definitely need like a lower, a lot lower value here like there's not enough shadow here that that should be like yeah yeah that wasn't working at all um, in fact all the way because when I was working on this before I didn't have the dark values in so it was kind of difficult to judge some stuff and when you actually put the full value range in then it becomes much easier to see where, where things are going um, let's get a Get a hog out for this. What value are we there? Five? About five. I'm going to bring up the value and add a little bit of chrome around there. So if I start off with the neutral, so that's a bit of black, a bit of raw umber. Get some white in there, bring it up to a value five which I'll check because, you know, I want to be sure I'm right. This is like a months of value scale. That's a value five. That's nice. I'm going to bring in a little bit of yellow ochre. That's going to go to yellow. So I'm going to bring in just the tiniest bit of the red. Quinaco down roads. Careful now. A little bit of that. Bring the value up a tad. And see what happens if I put that in there. Not enough chroma. I'm being a bit timid today. I'm being too timid. That's nice. And I like, personally, I like my backgrounds really brushy. And I like a bit of texture on there. Yeah, 
going towards the shadow. What am I going to do about the eucalyptus leaves? Definitely not going to get to them today. I think actually a little bit of this just around that edge there will be able to throw the squash into relief a little bit. Yes. Oh, sorry, I'm completely not keeping up with the comments. <laughs> Brenda says, why not mix compliments? Oh, don't get me started. Seriously, don't get me started. Because it's, it's just extremely unreliable, Brenda. You don't know where you're going to end up. I mean, people say, people use compliment mixing for, um, they call, usually they call it neutralizing the color. And what they mean is dropping chroma. It's a very unreliable way to drop chroma. If you want to drop chroma, of color without affecting um, everything else at the same time. The best way to do it is with a lower chroma version of the same color. So if I have a, a blue and the same value, say I have a blue and I want it, it's too, it's, it, the blue is too intense. So say I'm painting this vase, right? It's, it's a, a low, low, lowish chroma blue. So I could mix up ultramarine blue and white to the right value, but the chroma would be way too high. If I put orange in that, if I put any, any orange in it, the hue would go all over the place. It would drop the chroma for sure, but the hue would just go wild. Um, and also, uh, I like that. Also, um, sorry, I'm losing my thread because something interesting just happened. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, the value would change um, and the hue would change and I would lose control of my color, but it's very easy to lose control of your color very quickly that way. Whereas if I used a black, ivory black is basically a blue, um, and brought it up to the same value with white, then I could mix in a little bit of that and it, would, it wouldn't change um, the chroma. Uh, sorry, it wouldn't change the value. It wouldn't change the hue particularly so I've got you know fine control over the color um, but it would it would drop the chrome and, I, and I, you know to exactly the amount that I want it to it's just a case of how reliable or not the method is and and careful to um, careful to control would we have to buy the different hues color chips separately yeah yeah you kind of do Oh, I'm so behind on messages. I'm sorry, there's loads of messages here. Oh, Roberta says, Hi Paul, I'm using water soluble oils. What would the couch be? That's a good question. Whew. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be oil. <laughs> Honestly, you know, um, I don't know. I never, I've never used them, so I don't know. I would have to look it up, but I'm, I'm guessing some kind of alkyd medium would work. Like an alkyd medium would, would probably be all right. I would think. But honestly, I, I I'm, I'm, uh, you know, don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. I'm going to bring this you down a little bit around here because it's going to help the squash I'm really I'm, I'm liking the squash I've done hardly anything on it but it's it's in a happy place so I want to sort of bring it up a little bit I want to uh, help it stand out a little bit and although it's the background isn't really doesn't have that much chrome and it's not that low in value there it would I think it would look nice if I put it in so I'm playing a little bit now, really, just, you know, hopefully this all won't sink in. Um, I'm getting to a point where I'm not sure what I want to work on next. I know I want to do some more on the cloth, but I think I, I've actually spent more time just sorting out the big, big sort of, 
the bigger parts and the feel of it at the moment. And I'm, f I'm pretty happy where that's all sitting at the moment. So I think I'm going to wrap up for today because also my kids need food and I need to make their pie. Oh, I almost got quinacridone rose in my squash. That would have been a disaster. So I need to make their pie and vegetables for their dinner. I think I already have actually. I've got some. I'm going to have to paint some of that again. Um, so moved on a little bit today. <laughs> Let's do something like this for the next one. This is actually the next workshop is going to be surface textures. So brass. Yum. And glass. Silver. Possibly ceramic and definitely cloth. I want to do um, go a bit in depth on, on creating different surface textures in paint. I think that would be uh, lots of fun to do. <laughs> That's all right, Susan. Oh, Jim, thank you very much. Jim says you can get water-soluble linseed oil from Holbein Duo Aqua. Great. There you go. Thank you, Ginia. So, yeah, listen, thanks for coming today and, and watching me paint for a little bit. Um, I'm happy with where things are going, I think, at the moment. Uh, probably my next job is to resolve more of the cloth now that I can see overall how things are pretty much how the things are going to work resolve some parts of the cloth um, and then I, I, I've got to bite the bullet and get onto these eucalyptus leaves and I'm going to have to oil out to do that as well I think but it just feels like it's going in a nice direction at the moment I would say a guardedly happy at this point <laughs> we'll see where we go I'm probably going to be streaming again later this week I don't know if I'm going to be doing this though I'm actually getting now I've been talking about doing silver and glass and stuff I'm actually and cloth, I'm, I'm itching to do some. So, uh, might end up doing that later on this week. Couple, messing about with a couple of things. Um, thanks for joining. If you want to, um, just before I go, <clears throat> if you f just follow me on Facebook or YouTube or something, and you want to, um, know when I'm going to stream or you want to know about workshops or courses or anything like that you can always pop over there and subscribe to my site and then um, you won't miss anything I don't send out a huge amount of emails I do quite a lot of free stuff um, that's what I mostly do actually so um, join the party <laughs> yes, silver and glass margin and different kinds of cloth. I need to find some satin. Satin is fun to paint because the values are all over the place, you know, but it is a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to run off now. Thanks very much, everyone. Nice to see you again, and I'll see you um, later in the week. <laughs>